my heart's as full as a baked potato. I think you'll know precisely what I mean when I say it's a Hampson auction day. The great thing about that reference is pretty much nobody, apart from my sister, will understand that. But we're here at Mavericks in Hollywell, North Wales, for this, the final auction in the Hampson auction calendar. Great mix, huge, eclectic, vast mix of classic cars going under the hammer today. Let's go and have a look at what we've got. Hi everybody, I'm in my director's jacket. I must apologize for the audio that you've just had to go through. And um, to be fair, you're gonna to have to deal with it as well for a little bit longer. It does get a lot better. We don't know what happened on the day, but obviously this is now past the fact and there's not a lot that we can do about it, even though Blair's an absolute genius. So please just stick with us. Well, I've got you. Hit subscribe as well, that'd be delicious. The video is gonna get great and the audio is gonna get better. Can you believe it? <sighs> Where better to start with one of my favorite barges of all time. This Rolls-Royce Corniche Saloon, 1971 in royal navy blue paint and tobacco hide. What is it I love about these so much? Pretty much everything. It's massive, it's an absolute boat. In making it a three door, Rolls-Royce really carved a Corniche in the market. <laughs> Based on the shadow, this has got the same 6.75 litre V8 engine, but it absolutely purrs along. I love the word waft. It wafts along in absolute sumptuous comfort. And they only made 1,108 Corniches. So surely from an investment angle, this has got to be a real, real great buy. This is estimated today at 25 to 30,000. And to be fair, you'd need 25 or 30,000 in the bank to maintain it as well. But what a purchase for that. Nice day like this. Get down the pub on a Welsh country lane. You're having a niche time, aren't you? So we've talked about a car I love. Now let's get on to the one that my mum would bloody love. It's a car that she's always wanted, the original Citroen DS21. This car in particular has actually just completed a 2000 mile European road trip. So brave owner, but it's such a powerful testament as to the car's quality and usability. I'll tell you what, it's brisk. My hands are dropping off. I feel sorry for you, Blair. Are you okay, mate? Oh no, I thought you were gonna nod. <laughs> anyway, the DS absolutely blew people's minds when it came out with its hydro pneumatic suspension. It just cosseted the French farmers over all the bumpy fields and the access roads. Little wonder that cameramen would use these vehicles for horse racing and all this sort of jazz because it just kept the car so, so stable. You can manually adjust as well. This is the park position. You can have it higher for driving and even higher. So it's almost off road when driving off road. That makes a bit of sense, doesn't it? But this looks like my favorite kind of classic car. It's clean, it's almost super, super mint, but there's a couple of little bits and all that does for me, it makes me feel more happy to drive it. It makes it usable. You don't have to wrap it up in cotton wool and leave it in a dehumidified air bubble forever. You can actually take it out, enjoy it, and just have a wonderful time making everybody's day better. Guided at 18 to 22,000 pounds, that's, very proper money, I think, for a very, very proper car. Value of DS is all over the place. Of course, so many of them have been dug out of fields in France, brought over to the UK, so they need a lot of work. There's a lot of underside issues going on. This one, that work doesn't need to be done. It's presentable, it's clean. We know it drives after a 2,000 mile Euro road trip, so it's absolutely glorious. I wish I had the money to put into it right now but I don't because there's too many exciting things happening at HQ, but somebody is gonna have a very, very nice car at the end of the day. As I said before out the front, such an eclectic mix of cars spanning 100 years actually. We've got Granada's Vauxhall Viva right there. Do you know that was my dad's first car? Not the exact one, but um, a Viva like that. He put Wolf Race wheels on it and a big exhaust. And he wonders where I get it from. Wonderful 190. Mercedes, I don't know what this is, my God. 
a Gilburn Invader estate. Doesn't that look mean? It looks like something you might have built actually on Grand Theft Auto when you could modify bits and put roof scoops in and all that sort of jazz. An incredible metro over here, Van Dom Pla, which thanks to Alan Partridge, I know means gold plated. Super rare thing as well. This is an automatic. And it just is so period. It looks exactly like you'd expect from a 1983 Metro. Gold, black, Jewish racing gold, tiny, tiny wheels, skittle-like thing, brown interior as well, because why not? I think that might do pretty well. Lots of collectors are all over these cars. They're usable, they're cheap to fix, parts are everywhere, and they're just charming. All-time favorite thing is a window sticker from the supplying dealership, especially when the phone number is four or five digits long. Trowbridge, 2077. So Trowbridge, where's that? Somerset, Bath, yeah, somewhere like that. Just imagine it. And it's clean and with no reserve as well. Might just go pretty well. So many wonderful classics here. Mark III Fiesta, Mazda 323, Toyota MR2, an early one, 1986. Call it MR2 because it's a mid-engined, rear-drive, two-seater sports car. Volkswagen Scirocco. These are all cars that you'd see at the supermarket car park every single Saturday. And now they're classics and people are gunning for them. MG RV8. It's a brave man that buys one of those. BMW Z3. And such a favourite of mine, the TVR Chimera. Massive, massive power. Massive, massive noise and so many great design features. Blair, come and have a look. Super, super clean side profile with thanks to having no door handle whatsoever. In fact, you get in under here, press the button on the wing mirror, door pops open. Obviously that leads to electrical issues with solenoids and stuff, but who cares? Do you know what? It's a TVR, things are going to break and it's gonna cost you a lot of money, but such a massive community of TVR owners huge parts availability, loads and loads of specialists all around the country that can look after these. I can't think of many nicer cars to have on a sunny day. My uncle had a 350 V8, but this is back in the old days when child safety wasn't really paramount, but we'd jump in his 350 V8, wedge in white, me and my sister both in the passenger seat, whoops, seatbelt around the both of us, and then happy the lovely Greyhound on the parcel shelf, and we'd have a lovely time, and it was always noisy. Perhaps my favorite design piece of the car is just down here, the indicator hole in the front bumper. Perhaps it's urban legend, but Peter Wheeler himself did say that that was one of those happy accidents. He was in the office on Bristol Avenue up in Blackpool, and it's when the car was at design stage, so there were clay models all over the place, his dog scampered out of the office and took a chunk out of the cast for the front bumper. And that's what it left. The shape of it was so cool, Peter thought, do you know what, let's keep it going. And there it is, the doggo's bite in the front bumper. We love it. Now for what I think might just be one of the buys of the day, apart from the star car that we've got here as well, of course, but this E46 M3 Cabriolet only 80,000 miles on the clock, and it's a beauty. These cars are absolutely flying in value right now. It seems anything German and fast is just shooting up. This is guided at eight to 10,000 pounds, and for the life of me, I don't know why it's so low. Sure, the condition isn't perfect, but it's black, so there's always gonna be a few little scratch marks about the place. But if you take a look at the wheels, Blair, these are the 19 inch Fux wheels. That's F-U-C-H-S, by the way. 19 inch alloy wheels, and look how polished they are. A lot of these wheels over the years would get repainted or powder coated into a dull silver, and it lost so much of the appeal. These are still wonderfully polished. The interior, the black leather on the inside looks absolutely great. The one thing I think that's holding this car back, only from a purist point of view, is the gearbox. It's the SMG, so it's a sequential manual gearbox, basically, which means that there is a clutch within the car, but there's no pedal. So if you were to just plant your foot on the accelerator, 
you get to a gear change and it goes and then engages and then you're away again the best way to combat that lunge however is just use the paddles or the gear stick that's what i always did with mine the m3 remains one of the cars that i regret selling more than any the fun the noise from the 3.2 straight six was absolutely sensational the dynamic of the car incredible no wonder bmw called the m cars the ultimate driving machine Sorry, Blair, I know we need to talk about the 911, but when I see a Maserati 3200 with the boomerang rear lights, I got a little bit giddy. But how's about this for a car? 1985 Porsche 911 Targa in white with the Fox wheels, the whale tail spoiler, incredible interior. It's just everything you'd want from a 911. I could tell that it's getting a lot of love as well. This chap's got his bidding finger ready. Hands up. <laughs> She doesn't need to know. <laughs> Wives rule, and that's the fact. Wives always win. But it's just, for someone my age, you know, mid to late 30s, this is the 911 that just always will be. The whale tail was the thing of beauty for every kid my age. And we'd always have one of these on the wall and a few on the scale X-Trix track as well. But let's not take away from how good this car actually is. The condition of it is absolutely flawless. The wheels are all wonderfully refurbished. The interior is perfectly trimmed as well. Can I get in? No, I can't because it's locked. But MOT all the way through to September next year. There's only 80 odd thousand miles on the clock. So this is guided, I think, 25 to 30. Something like that, what we're saying? Yeah, 25 to 30, just about 35. 25. 30, 30, thank you, sir. 30 to 35,000 pounds. The cars are only going one way, and that's sky high. Somebody's going to get one heck of a car today. Now we're into the, the power zone. Come on, Blair, for crying out loud. Look at this Audi Quattro Rally Evocation. 650 horsepower in this car to all four wheels. It's the car that transformed World Rally, bringing the Quattro technology. It's just absolutely intense. You can't quite see in, unfortunately, but you can clearly make out the incredible gear shifter there, the bucket seats, and just the shape of it, the wide arches, just boxiness of it. You know what it sounds like just looking at it. You know how quick it is just looking at it. This is guided quite heftily, although not for the car that it is, but 65 to 75,000 pounds. Oh, God. And this great as well, 309. This is a proper FIA approved car as well. Rally history. And you just buy that, join the rally club and have a load of fun. I always love a classic Impreza when I see that it's got three doors. This is a WRX Type R looking super clean and pretty. Toyota Celica GT4 as well. Sorry, Blair, I'm all over the place. Celica GT4 as well. My mate Dom had one of those and he thought he blew it up. So he got rid of it super cheap and it turned out to be a 20 pound fuse, something like that. But it's all right. He got a Calibra turbo after that and then he ran it out of oil. So well done. And how's this? Blair, I hope you've got some lovely shots of this. It looks five million pounds. Zach here at Hampson says proper Mike Tyson spec. Black with mega chrome details. This Bentley Turbo R long wheelbase. Mike Tyson, Blair. Long wheelbase. <laughs> is guided at five to eight thousand pounds. Can you imagine a car more sumptuous and more powerful and more hooliganish for five to eight thousand pounds? I'm not sure if I could. Again, I've mentioned it about the Corniche over there. You'd need to have that purchase price in the bank pretty much all the time anyway, just in case something went wrong. They're not the cheapest things to maintain, nor are they the cheapest things to run, but just have a look. Five to eight grand, absolute belter. I wonder if that's his. Maybe it is. Right, should we go in the hot, should we go in the tent? Should we go camping? Oh yeah, look at this. It's another thing with auctions like this, you just get cool cars in the car park. Always love an early prelude. 
Okay, here we go. Yeah. So there's a couple of things that really, really bring to life how the classic car market's going. There's a car just over there that we used to swap about at the pub for 50p and a bag of McCoys. This Series 2 RS Turbo just here. But this now is not 50p and a bag of McCoys. It's guided at 28 to 35,000 pounds. But when you look at the market now for Series 1 RS Turbos, which are breaching 40,000 pounds for a clean example, that looks like proper money for this car. Fully restored, absolutely massive nut and bolt restoration. Zach actually sent me a load of pictures of this car, trying to tempt me into a purchase. And I've got the images of the full restoration, everything underneath this vehicle as well. The sills, all the bits, all the components are absolutely immaculate. The interior's great, the car's great. It's a white RS Turbo, for God's sake. There's nothing quite like it. And I think it's gonna make the money. So a fully restored by a multiple Concours winning restorer, by the way, Series 2 RS Turbo with 80 odd thousand miles on the clock. So much of this car is brand new. Michelin tires, refurbished wheels, full glass out respray as well. At 28 to 35,000, this has got to make the money, surely. What an investment, what a piece, even just to park up and look at every now and then. Great piece of history. We're having a whale of a time. God, everyone here is dying with laughter after that last joke. Because it was obviously hilarious. But we all love an Escort Cosworth. There's two of them here. And this one is a particular beauty. 1995 RS Cosworth Lux. This has got the big turbo. So it's running about 240 horsepower, which is nothing by today's standards. But at the time, it was absolute hooligan spec 5,000. And jumping in one now, I had a drive in one of these a couple of months ago and I felt like the biggest boy racer immediately, just the thrum of the car, the noise, the gear change, not being as slick as what you're used to now, but still really, really lovely. The power delivery of it, the huge turbo lag, waiting for the power band to kick in. I was just hooning it. I felt like an absolute hooligan and it was the best day of my life, maybe. But this with just 56,000 miles on it in petrol blue. Very, very standard car to look at. Standard Cosworth five spoke wheels. The only real modification on the car, apart from the odd aesthetic bit, you know, down here, little Cosworth arch grills. All we've got to the front end is the classic fast car max power Moret quad headlamp conversion, which I think suits the car absolutely perfectly. Reminiscent of the rally cars for which this was actually created. It was the homologation for Ford to enter the World Rally Championship. This Cosworth is 35 to 45 grand on the guide. I wouldn't be surprised if it gets to the top end of that, such as the collectability of a nice car. Low mileage, low ownership. Sorry, everybody. Getting in everyone's way. Everyone wants to buy a Cosworth, don't they? Now for the oldest car here, and a car that's probably older than anyone you know, Unless you know someone over 100, that is. This 1922 Citroen Torpedo. Absolutely incredible thing. It looks like every toy car I had as a kid. Come and have a look, Blair. The, just the, the air of French royalty and la di da about it. The driver sits there in the front, of course, and the passengers, typically the people that own the car, sit in the back. Blair, there's even a little screen just here that you can lift up and separate yourself from the help, which I think is absolutely mega. Another thing that many people won't even have a clue about, in fact, I don't truly know how to operate it, but come and have a look. The start of Oh, right, to so another one. It's like you're head and shoulders yeah, uh, yeah. on this shop, so I don't want to see, well, I don't see these pants or anything. Hello again, sorry. Um, nightmare with the audio once again, and I'm really heartbroken about it because A, I made a great joke about, because it's got a starter handle, I made a joke about the wings coming out from underneath. That led to a chitty chitty bang bang thing. That led me to say that Dick Van Dyke's French cousin was over in the corner. And then I said chitty chitty bang bang in a French accent. And it was hilarious because chitty sounds like shitty. And it really, really worked. I'm so sorry. Thank you. I love you. Do you want a, do you want a brew? 
Yeah, go on, mate. Yeah, nice. Loads of bodies here, Blair. I love it. And speaking of cars that we used to trade for 50p and a bag of watsits, the original Golf R32 there, that glorious six cylinder sound, they're shooting up in value. Eight grand, 10 grand, crazy, crazy money. Mark 1 Golf GTI Cabriolet as well. The original small bumper, this looks like a 1985 original Pirelli P slot alloy wheels on. I'll be super interested to see what this goes for. I've got one myself. It's much later, it's a 91, it's a clipper, and I've absolutely ruined it in many people's eyes by putting a big bloody engine in it, Porsche wheels and brakes. I'm never selling it, so I don't care what it's worth. More great Fords, an early 2.8 Capri, clearly getting a lot of love. Great Saab V4 as well. Funky looking bit of Swedish design, but such a collectible car as well. More Triumphs and Morrises galore. And this is one that I really do adore, the Fiat Belvedere just here. Come and have a look. A, isn't it one of the cutest damn things you ever saw? Incredible suicide doors. The interior trim is absolutely gorgeous, a sort of glazed olive mahogany. I just think this would be the most fun thing to go toot toot, get that Webasto roof wide open. Incredible thing. I love it. What's the guide on this? No reserve. Oh my God. I can't buy anything. I've got to sit on my hands, but I'll see how this goes. Oh. And then much nicer than the Mark I Cortina that was at the last auction because that was mine. This one is sure to perform a little nicer than mine. The problem with mine last time is it looked so great in photographs. It didn't quite look so great in person. This one does. It's guided the same as mine was as well. At eight to 10,000. So much stronger by than mine was last time. And I think the color might just grab somebody. But anyway, enough of me torturing myself with cars that I shouldn't buy today. There's a few more beauties inside and then we're getting ready for the auction. This is why I shouldn't be allowed anywhere near an auction. 